depending on what you eat, you need a different constellation of nutrients. And so if you're eating a bunch of plants, you actually need different nutrients because there are anti-nutrients in plants that stop you from being able to use, utilize, absorb the nutrients, vitamins, minerals, et cetera, even proteins and fats that, that we need uh, to absorb and use. And one of those is vitamin C as well. So when you're eating carbohydrates, carbohydrates uh, use a GLUT4 transporter to get into your, your system, be utilized around your body. Same transporter is used for vitamin C. Vitamin C actually looks like a little fructose molecule with a little tail on it, right? And so, you know, it actually has, has a similar shape and chemical nature in certain parts of the molecule. So they are able to come through the same GLUT4 receptor. When you're eating a bunch of carbohydrates, that drowns out the vitamin C. And so you need an abundance, an overabundance of vitamin C in order to absorb the little that you need. And you really only need a little. And in fact, what is going to cause scurvy, right? Scurvy is going to be caused from not being able to make proper collagen. And vitamin C helps hydrolyze proline and lysine to make properly formed collagen structures. But when you're eating a lot of meat, you don't need vitamin C to hydrolyze uh, those those pro those amino acids because they're already hydrolyzed. You're already eating collagen. You're eating those uh, pre hydrolyzed amino acids. So you don't actually need it, right? Not for not for scurvy anyway. You you do need some vitamin C for other things, but it's very very little, and it's even less when you're not eating carbohydrates, and it's even even less when you're not um, uh, when you're eating meat. You know, think about think about the Vikings, right? First of all, the Limes, right? They say, oh well, they had. They, they ate a bunch of uh, citrus because they were getting scurvy. Great. What were they feeding their people? A bunch of gruel and grog and, and uh, stuff like that. The officers ate meat. The officers did not get scurvy. It was the sailors themselves. And this was something that uh, American sailors actually just didn't believe. They just didn't buy that they were getting this. They're like, yeah, you guys are full of it. It's something else, right? Because they weren't seeing the same things because they were feeding uh, their sailors better. And uh, look at the, you know, the, the Vikings and things like that. They sailed all over the world. They sailed to, to the New World. You know, Leif Erikson uh, is thought to have made it to North America in, you know, what was it, the 1100 AD around that time, right? So around the time of like Norman invasion. So it's a long time ago. And they were not, they were not bringing a bunch of lemons and limes. They, they, they had packed barrels full of salted meat, right? They didn't get scurvy. You know, if they're just a bit combative, then, you know, just tell me like, okay, how long will it take for me to get scurvy? Great. I'll see you then. We'll see if I have scurvy. And, you know, as I say a lot, uh, because I think it really matters and people should use this more in their daily life, which is the quote from uh, the physicist Richard Feynman, when he said, it doesn't matter how brilliant your theory is, and it doesn't matter how smart you are. If it doesn't agree with experiment, it's wrong. Okay, so they're saying if you do, if you're only eating meat, then you will get scurvy in three months. Great. See many then in three months, four months, five months, six months, six years, no scurvy. Okay, they're wrong. 